Hello everyone, this is Maki. Let's continue our analysis of the history of the cosmic era. Last time, we looked at the events leading up to the formation of the Earth Alliance. We witnessed the amazing formation of this organization, which was declared only two days after the collapse of the United Nations. Now the war between the Earth Alliance forces and the Zoft forces begins. Today, we'll review the history leading up to the deployment of the neutron jammer on Earth. By examining the situation on Earth, we can uncover some interesting interstate relationships. We'll also gain insight into how the popular sword Calamity Ganon from the Astray series and its pilot Edward Harrison came to desert the Earth's alliance forces. So, let's dive into the history of mankind's first major space war. Cosmic Era 70 was a pivotal year in history. On February 7, the founding of the Earth's alliance was announced marking a clear confrontation with the Prant. Then, on February 8, Tuzumi Naraho, the representative of the Orb Union, declared neutrality. This declaration stated no matter what events may occur in the future, or will maintain its position of independence and neutrality. It would later go down in history as representative as House Declaration of Neutrality. This declaration was issued the day after the official formation of the Earth's Alliance. Although the war had not yet begun, Uzumi may have felt that its outbreak was inevitable. And eventually, the war began. Three days after Uzumi's declaration on February 11, the Earth's Alliance formally declared war on Prant. From the Ptolemy space on the lunar surface, an invasion force set out to destroy Prant. At this time, a covert action by a sudden Earth's Alliance officer resulted in the nuclear missile being loaded onto a mobile armor carrier. On February 14, one of the most infamous tragedies of the cosmic era unfolded. The Zoft mobile suits proved overwhelmingly superior to the Earth's Alliance's mobile armor. In a desperate situation, the Earth's Alliance was saved by a single nuclear missile. However, this missile was not aimed at the Zoft fleet, but at a space colony. It was fired at colony number 7 of the 120 colonies, known as Junius City. This colony was Junius 7. Junius 7 was an agricultural facility and an armed facility. However, to Brocosmos, it was considered a construct created by space-dwelling demons for their own benefit. The attack resulted in the loss of 243,721 lives. Among the victims was Lanor Zara, Patrick Zara's wife. This event became known in the history of the Cosmic Era as Brody Valentine. In various comics and games, Colonel William Sutherland is often portrayed as the one who ordered this attack. Indeed, carrying out an act involving the independent procurement, cover transport, and use of nuclear weapons would require a high position and powerful supporters. The interpretation that Sutherland, who was close to Neruda's rail, the leader of Brew Cosmos at the time, was the mastermind behind the Brody Valentine, is quite plausible. On February 18, Siegel Klein, chairman of the Prime Supreme Council, issued two important statements. The first was the Declaration of Independence in mourning. It expressed condolences for the lives lost in the Brody Valentine incident and declared prompt independence and resolute resistance to the Earth Alliance. The second was Chairman Klein's active neutrality advisory. This statement clarified that Prant's enemy was only the Earth Alliance, not countries that had not joined the Alliance. It also promised that Prant produced goods and technology would be given preferential treatment to non-aligned nations. 
The Oceania Union and the South American United States formally accepted this declaration. However, the Arab Alliance had grown into an immensely powerful organization. On February 19, the very next day, it began a military invasion of the South American United States, seizing key facilities such as the Panama Space Port. Eventually, the South American United States was forcibly annexed by the Atlantic Federation. As a side note, the frequent depictions of the sword calamity gun and battling the mobile suits of the Earth's alliance often refer to scenes depicting the South American War of Independence. When South America, which had been forcibly united under the Earth's alliance, rose up again to seek independence Edward Harrison, once an Earth's alliance mobile suit pilot, defected with the sword Calamity Ganem to join the South American forces. Now, back to the history of the Cosmic Era. On February 20, the Oceania Union condemned the Earth's alliance's military aggression on the international stage and officially declared its support for Prant. This marked the emergence of what would be known as pro-Prant nations on Earth. In response to this declaration, the Earth's alliance declared war on the Oceania Union. As the war began to intensify on February 20, whilst individuals who would play pivotal roles in the history of the cosmic era, such as Asran Zor and Isaac Joel, joined the Zoft forces. At this point, they were still novices in military matters, so they enrolled in the Zoft Academy to learn military skills and techniques. On February 22, a large-scale battle broke out between the Earth's alliance and the Zoft forces. This battle took place on the space colony Drossel. The Earth's alliance committed its first through third fleet to this engagement. Zoft introduced a new weapon in this battle, the Neutron Jammer. Designed to prevent nuclear tragedies, like that of the Brody Valentine, this device also had the side effect of disrupting radar systems, which proved to be highly effective. Despite the Earth's alliance's overwhelming numerical superiority, Soft fought them to a standstill. While a cruiser destroyed 37 mobile armors and 6 battleships during the battle, earning him the Nebula Medal and establishing his reputation as an ace pilot known to allies and enemies alike. The battle itself ended with the collapse of Yggdrasil, effectively ending the confrontation. Zapt forces launch an invasion of Earth in order to defeat the Earth's alliance. One of the goals of this operation is to secure food. However, media reports on Earth exaggerated this food security aspect. Why such reports were circulated remains unclear, as it is not mentioned in any of the sources. Perhaps it was an attempt to sway public opinion by portraying Zaft as a force desperate for resources to gain an advantage in the war. The people were told the image that the enemy is being cornered. Zaft's Earth invasion operation began with the initial assault going down in history as the first battle of Victoria. The goal was to capture the Victoria spaceport but fighting without sufficient ground support proved to be a significant disadvantage ultimately leading to Zaft's defeat in the battle. In response to the defeat at the First Battle of Victoria, Zaft undertook a significant revision of its Earth invasion plans. This led to the decision to implement Operation Overboros, which consisted of three main actions. Secure military bases on Earth. Capturing mass drivers used to launch spacecraft, such as spaceports and shuttles, effectively trapping Earth's forces within Earth's environment. Preventing the use of nuclear weapons and fission energy through the use of neutron jammers. These three components together formed the basis of Operation Overboros, 
which was formally approved by the Grand Council on March 15th. On April 1, soft launch operational robots by deploying a large number of neutron jammers to Earth. These devices fell deep into the ground upon impact, making removal extremely difficult. As a result, facilities that relied on nuclear fission for power generation were rendered inoperable, severely limiting the Earth's Alliance's ability to produce energy and leaving them in a dire situation. Even before the dawn of the cosmic era, oil resources had been depleted. In this advanced stage of scientific achievement that made space exploration possible, an unimaginable crisis unfolded that led to widespread starvation and death. This event would come to be known in history as the April Fool's Crisis. The hatred that the people of the Earth's Alliance felt for the coordinators grew to unprecedented levels. Even the Neutral Orb Union experienced minor tragedies. The disruptive effects of the neutron jammers on radio communications had unexpected consequences. For example, the cell phone that young Mayu Osuka had begged her parents to buy lost its communication function. It is heartbreaking to think that Siegel Klein, who played such a pivotal role, would be remembered by some as a villain for actions that indirectly ruined the little girl's treasured possessions. Major events such as the Brody Valentine and the use of neutron jammers have taken place. Characters who play a crucial role in history, such as Athran and others, have made their appearance in history. On February 21, Cosmic Era 70, they entered the Zacht Academy, and on January 25, Cosmic Era 71, they infiltrated the space colony Heliopolis. In less than a year of training, they had acquired the skills to easily defeat Earth's Alliance pilots. By analyzing history, we gain a clearer understanding of the coordinator's extraordinary abilities. I plan to continue analyzing the history of the Cosmic Era in the next episode. Please look forward to it! Thank you for watching to the end! See you next time!